A couple of New Orleans natives took decades of friendship to a whole new life-saving level. Kim Holden shows us why they were the perfect match to spread an important message. When Sue Allen and Antonio Miller met at church in the 1980s, they had no idea how intertwined their lives would become. Every time there was something going on, we were always together, or if there were uh, an issue going on, we were still together. And no matter what, we were always together. When Sue was diagnosed with renal failure in 2003 and put on home dialysis, she says depression set in. Her mom had died. Her husband was also sick. Then she received the news. They had come to the decision, rather, that I was eligible to receive a transplant. So um, I was really excited about that, but I had no one in my family that could uh, give me a kidney because I have a very small family and they either have high blood pressure or diabetes. Her doctors put her on the transplant list. There is a huge, huge need for um, transplant in the United States and in the state of Louisiana. Lana Stevens with the Louisiana Organ Procurement Agency, or LOPA, says it's no surprise her doctors told her she could die waiting for a kidney. Nationally, that waiting list number is currently over, it's close to 107,000 patients that are waiting uh, for some type of life-saving organ transplant. Over 90,000 of those are waiting on kidneys. Antonio wasn't willing to chance it. Obviously, you cared for Sue a whole lot, and, and what happened? One day you realized that she, that she really, she might die without having an organ transplant. What was mm -hmm. going through your mind? Um, at that moment, believe it or not, I was saying, no, this, this just can't happen. I mean, if something can be done, this just cannot happen. After 20 years of friendship, he didn't blink an eye. Antonio ring my doorbell one night, which I wasn't surprised because he would always come by to check on us. And um, he noticed that I seemed very upset and just unusually depressed that night. And he asked me what was the problem. And I told him exactly what my coordinator said. And uh, he just said, um, I'll give you a kidney. Like you had a million of them to give out. Right, exactly. <laughs> hey. Here's just one. We can deal with the rest of them. Just take this one. I said, I'll give it a kidney. And she was she just said, yeah, right. And I'm saying, okay, seriously, I'll give you a kidney. I was like, yeah, right. You know, I just didn't believe it. And uh, I didn't think very much about it because I thought he was just teasing. Sue actually ignored his offer, but Antonio got tested anyway. The call came quickly from the transplant coordinator. Within a few days she called with the results to say that we were not only a match but we were a double match and that's very unusual for uh non-related uh people that just even to me means more like they were it was just meant to be she asked she said are you all related i said no we're not related are you sure i said i'm absolutely sure i'm positive and she was hesitant she was kind of quiet for me. she said are you sure you're not related and i said Understand me well, we are not related. March 24th, 2003, the transplant took place two weeks after Sue's husband passed away. It was a success and life was getting back to normal. Then came Hurricane Katrina. Still sticking together, they evacuated together to Baton Rouge. One day we were just talking and doing stuff, packing and unpacking and all. And Antonio said, you know, we get thrown together every time there's trouble. He said, we are always standing for one another. And uh, he said, we ought to get married. I didn't know if he was really serious. I said, this is his serious look, but I still just don't know. But he made it very plain that um, he wanted us to become husband and wife. And that was the man. The man gave you a kidney. Yes. How could <laughs> yes. you not think he was serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And people tease us about that all the time because they say, oh, he followed his kidney. I think it was just kind of like the perfect storm of everything that brought them together. But I just love that. At first, she wasn't sure that she wanted to accept. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? I just gave you a kidney. <laughs> so somebody going to accept something. <laughs>
The two tied the knot on March 25th, 2006. And so when they called and told us that they got married, we were all kind of like, what? 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 <laughs> Sue and Antonio have since been advocates for deceased or living organ donations to anyone who listen. And I think when people know um, someone that's been touched by it personally like they have, that really helps to ease those fears and to dispel those myths um, and misconceptions that are out there, unfortunately. It's also an act of love and definitely because, for example, what greater love than you have to give up yourself than organ or tissue that someone else may have a chance to live or also have an enhancement in their lives that is so important. They recently celebrated their transplant and wedding anniversary all in the month of March. No doubt they are a match made in heaven. And I tell people, I say, yeah, I had a double fortune because I got the uh, kidney and the young man. <laughs> I love it, the young man. And that was Kim Holden reporting. LOPA only facilitates deceased organ donations and says, unfortunately, not everyone will receive that opportunity because there just are not enough, which is why living donors are so needed. We do have a link to learn more on fox8live.com. Just look for this story. I love that couple. Oh, they're great. They're great. He is so giving. The she kidney? better say yes. yes she, she better say seriously. <laughs> right. You can't say no. I gave you my kidney. Right. What wow. a story they have.